The smallest organisms comprise the bulk of all life on Earth. They're almost innumerable, like the stars in the universe. If you divided all the species on the planet into a pyramid, vertebrates would be at the top. That's you, me, birds, anything with a spinal cord. Tens of thousands of species. Next down is invertebrates. Millions of species. Bees, spiders, and other arthropods like mosquitoes. And at the base, we have microorganisms. In fact, bacteria and viruses alone consist of tens of millions to possibly billions of species. Science doesn't even know for sure. Humans occupy only a tiny sliver at the top of this pyramid. But our biggest challenge is human health, the health of our societies, economies, and ecosystems depend on the smallest of species. Insects pollinate the food we eat, Microbes invent the antibiotics we take, and viruses generate the epidemics we fight. If we can monitor the small life all around us, then we can predict the big. Innovation hinges on our ability to see the world differently, breaking boundaries and looking between the lines in an effort to solve some of the world's toughest challenges. More than ever, the world is realizing the urgency of monitoring viruses in the environment before they cause outbreaks. Premonition would change the paradigm from reacting to known pathogens to continuously looking for them as they evolve. These signals could help us spot potential threats earlier, respond faster, and develop new interventions before outbreaks occur. My background's in robotics. And about five years ago, we saw that robotics, AI, and cloud computing were reaching a tipping point where we could monitor the biome in entirely new ways at entirely new scales. It was really the 2014 Ebola outbreak that led to this realization. How did one of the rarest viruses on the planet jump from animals to people to cause this outbreak? What signals were we missing that might have allowed us to predict it? What technologies do we need to create? Essentially what's missing is a global sensor network and data platform for monitoring the small things, arthropods, microbes, and viruses in the environment. The environment is constantly leaving us a trail of clues. We just need to figure out how to read them. So how do we really build this global sensor network? For us, it starts with arthropods. These humble invertebrates, mosquitoes, beetles, bees, comprise most of our terrestrial animal biodiversity. Bees pollinate trillions of dollars in crops. Mosquitoes cause over 600 million clinical cases of disease per year. And each day, millions upon millions of arthropods interact with plants, animals, and ecologies across the planet. We want to collect as many of these signals as possible. And to do that, we need to build smart devices that literally pluck arthropods from midair. The sensors in our sensor network are robotic platforms, smart traps, that continuously lure, identify, and collect arthropods. This smart trap design can identify a mosquito species in a few milliseconds and then make an autonomous decision about whether to capture it for further analysis. This all happens in the split second that a mosquito flies past one of its sensors. The most number of mosquito encounters this trap saw in a single night was around 10,000. And for each one of those encounters, it took notes on the exact second it happened, the species of mosquito, ambient light levels, weather conditions, parameters that we can use to build entirely new models. It would be impossible for a human to take notes on 10,000 encounters in a single night, even if you didn't mind getting bitten thousands of times. So already one of these devices gives us new capabilities to monitor the biome. But the real power comes when they're networked together. Because a thousand of these, back of envelope, would produce petabytes of data per year, allowing us to model mosquito populations in new ways. And now we're getting to scales of data that are historically transformational. Think about the scale of weather data, power grids, the Internet of Things. We developed these smart traps in our proving ground, a unique lab for precisely replicating environments. With the turn of a dial, we can bring the real world into the lab. And now it's a humid dawn in Uganda, April 18, 1947, when Zika was first discovered. Malaria-transmitting mosquitoes begin to stir, pollinating moths take over from their daytime kin. The biology teaches, and our systems evolve. 
Let's keep zooming in following this to its logical conclusion. This network would learn the environment through its millions of arthropods. We've seen this in our test sites from urban cities to remote forests. And as it learns, it will start to detect potential anomalies that should be scanned for viruses, microbes, and other genetic signatures. Historically, we know what these anomalies will look like. There'll be emerging invasive species like mosquitoes, capable of transmitting new pathogens, sowing the seeds for outbreaks like Zika. There'll be pests, evolving resistance to our controls, re-emerging where they shouldn't. There'll be drops in pollinator populations, like bees and butterflies, signifying new underlying disease threats. These anomalies will contain microbes and viruses new to science. Some of these might be threats and some not. The challenge is that these microbes and viruses don't even have names. Fortunately, the genetic code gives a unique signature to every species in the form of DNA and RNA molecules. This is the name nature itself has given. So in addition to our robotic platforms, we developed cloud-scale genomic analyses for comprehensively scanning environmental samples for new and novel species from their genetic material. The scale here is also mind-blowing. A single arthropod sample can contain hundreds of millions of digital fragments of genetic material. We'll scan this against a database of over three trillion base pairs, representing the genomes of all sequenced life forms, and then build a statistical model of the most likely organisms present in a sample. Is there Ebola? Is there Zika? Is there a dog? Is there a cat? Using the genetic code and cloud-scale computing, we'll ask trillions of questions about a sample to build a genomic picture of its contents. To date, we've analyzed over 80 trillion base pairs of genetic material from environmental samples. We've been able to find a cow infected with a virus, and all this information was carried in the belly of a mosquito. This might sound like science fiction, but it isn't. Several years ago, we thought technology could help us monitor the biome in important new ways. It took time to get it right, and now our goal is to get it into the world. This is so important because threats to our human health and threats to our societies and economies are regularly emerging. In just the last few years, new threats emerge every six months. COVID-19 is the most recent example, but unfortunately, it's unlikely to be the last. The good news is that the biome generates an almost unfathomable number of signals. We just need to read them to keep up. At the microbial level, it's estimated that every second, a trillion, trillion viruses infect a trillion, trillion bacteria in our oceans. At the arthropod level, genomic techniques now suggest that millions of undiscovered species are hiding in plain sight, probably too difficult to visually distinguish. And at the vertebrate level, where we stand, we're now closer than ever to capturing these invisible signals. It took revolutions in consumer robotics, AI, and cloud computing to get us here. But here we are. And we're just getting started.